Hello. Hello. Hi, can you hear? Yes, yes. Hold What's on, up? let me pull it up. What's up, man? How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Good, good. I'm Ken, by the way. Nice to meet you. I'm Aaron. Nice to meet you too. Uh, you don't mind if I record this interview for the community? No. no. Okay. Cool. Uh, by the way, in forty minutes' time, if we don't finish, the Zoom is going to end. If we don't finish, then we can just join back using the same link and we can continue. But I think we'll finish by then. Um, all right, all right cool. let's get started. First question, tell us a bit about yourself, who you are and what you do. All right, so my name is Aaron Thompson. I'm 19 years old, uh, recently had a birthday. I'm from Texas, originally Dallas, and I am a rising sophomore at Harvard College. Um, I study economics and social studies. Um, with a special focus on African American studies, and I like to, like make TikTok content as well. That kind of um, showcases the intersection of you know, uh, you know, being like a black male at Harvard, but also you know a person who has personality who does things outside of school. Um, right now, I'm like interning with the United States House of Representatives, oh. so that's like. Something that's really cool right now, and that's something I'm highlighting throughout my TikTok experience. So, you know, just trying to find my footing, I guess, as a you know a small content creator. Okay, so the purpose of your whole personal brand is to document your entire journey as a as a student. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah more academic, and then to get into law school, you know, potentially from there, you know, kind of make the switch into professional. Cool. How do you balance your content creator life with your study life? Like, how do you find time to edit, film, stuff like that? Yeah, so I think initially it was a lot of luck at first. Uh, I was lucky enough to have, like, my first couple of videos, like, blow up to the point where I didn't have to really, like, work on a lot of videos for a while because they were still, like, Come, like the views are still coming in, so are the comments and the interaction. And so I didn't have to do much. I was able to focus on school. But when I started posting like more consistently, I had to rearrange my schedule. Um, so I don't take classes before 10 a.m. And I'm usually up at 7. So I use a lot of that time to just, uh, you know, maybe add a sound or, uh, you know, chop videos together. But I've been trying to post like at least weekly now. And so... I don't necessarily give myself a deadline or a timeline and as far as like posting because I am a student first and foremost like that's what I'm doing and so I just like post whenever I have the time but that's something I'm working on especially this upcoming fall semester um, being more consistent as far as you know college application season coming out so I already have some videos that I like made this summer that will be on schedule to be released and so i think a lot of it has to do with like being proactive now mm, i see you said uh you were quick to blow up your tiktok was well, that true like when you started it really quickly uh took place yeah so the first tiktok i made was like college reaction like college decision reactions and so um yeah that first video had six hundred thousand views oh wow and I kind of fumbled because I wasn't, um, I guess you could say fumble, yeah, because I didn't like post after that until like school started. And so, but yeah, after, in my second video, got like maybe like what, 70,000 views. And then I just started posting a little bit more. And then, you know, one had 7 million, 6 million, 5 million, and, and they were like consecutive. So, mm. so did you yeah. uh, did you have any previous experience with creating content? Did you have like a YouTube channel when you were younger or something? No, no. I thought like that's I really didn't even like TikTok at first. Oh, My wow. friends like downloaded because like I was like not really big on social media. Like I only had Instagram, and I never posted on Instagram until recently. And so, like TikTok, it was just seamless. Like it seemed like so easy to to use. I just looked. Yeah. Or how to do transitions or how would I be able to like piece these videos together and so um I initially was going to like upload my college reactions to YouTube but I recorded the video like vertically instead of like mm. horizontally so mm. that would be kind of crappy so I just uploaded it to TikTok and yeah. 
Yeah. Wow. So you, you just hit the jackpot. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but I think that's been the case for a lot of um, my peers. Like, I have a couple of friends, one friend who's close to 100K, and, like, she kind of just makes the same content I do. So I don't know. Like, it just, like... I've actually interviewed to... someone from Harvard before. Uh, her mm. name is um, Elise. I don't know if you know. Elise, her. oh, fam, yeah, Elise, Elise, fam, yeah, yeah. She's, she's cool. Oh, she's like the next I respect level. Her so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. She's like insane. Yeah. <laughs> so, how do yeah. you come up with content ideas? Okay, so yeah, a lot of it. Um, once again, like I said, like earlier, uh, like highlighting my identity as like a black person at Harvard. Um, like, there's definitely a discrepancy as far as representation um in elite campuses and so that's something that i like have used to my advantage um a lot of like the points that i'll make or like a lot of the videos i do will be centered around like the black community at harvard and you know for better or for worse you know we get like i think like all interaction is good interaction but we definitely get some like negative like comments and stuff but I mean, the purpose of what I'm doing is to highlight, you know, all the intersecting like identities at Harvard. And so a lot of it just comes from like cultural experience and competency. Like um, this one video was like a slave, like Harvard had like slave, like Harriet Tubman themed dinner, yeah. which is, I think on my end, it's like very like culturally insensitive, but like, it's also very funny, like a Harriet Tubman themed dinner. And I was just like, no one would think of that like unless like you, you had like a like a some kind of like connection to that and so i posted that it did like, pretty well so i think it's just like coming from my experience, or experience. Things that, like, yeah okay i see uh in terms of like dealing with the comments and the negativity that you like receive from time to time how do you go by that yeah so personally I like to make a joke out of it. I, I I like to comment back or I'll like say something really clever. But I know that when I feature a lot of my friends on my videos, that's something that I let them know like beforehand. Hey, um, I have a base of like followers who uh, like there's a portion of my followers who follow me to like leave hate comments. So are you OK with that? And, you know, I also take the necessary steps to kind of like ban certain words or, you know, report any um potentially spam or harsh comments and so you know if i feel like replying then i will reply but if not i'll just delete it but you know i've like i have tough skin like nothing really gets to me because you know, it's a projection at the end of the day you know i'm the one at harvard like i feel like that's mainly what a lot of a lot of the criticism is but at the end of the day like i'm the one getting the degree and you have to sit and watch me on tiktok so. yeah that's cool uh comp do you have a question you raised your hand you can unmute yourself if you want. Yeah. Did the first hate comment hurt or were you already prepared for it? So the first hate comment, like I had never, I feel like I'm a really social person. So like I had never like even experienced, like knew what, like how that experience would go or like interact with like some form of like cyber, you know, attack or like cyber bullying. And so I was kind of taken aback and then I just like, there's this sound, I think, by, like, Rico Nasty or something. And it just basically says, like, shut the F up. And it's, like, really funny. And so that's, like, my best friend, like, told me to, like, make a response video to that. And, like, yeah, that's how, like, usually I will, like, reply to, like, hate comments now. Like, if I think it's, like, to the point where I can, like, spin into another video, like, I'll post a video with, like, the hate comment and then just, like, make it a joke. So, yeah, it took me a bag, but, like, I wasn't offended personally because... Once again, I feel like a lot of it is projection. Mm -mm. I see. Thanks, Carl. Thank you. Um, yeah, no problem. In terms of speaking to the camera, you're really good at it, in my opinion. How do you, like, did you practice for, you know, speaking in front of the camera or, like, do you have any experience with speaking in the past? Yeah, so I did mock trial uh, for, like, three years in high school. Nice. So that's a lot of, like, public speaking, like, uh, speaking and things like that but like to be honest i fumble a lot like i can sometimes get caught up in like my words and so i just like what i've like been practicing is making it seem normal 
sometimes I feel like my earlier videos were a bit like too robotic, but now I just like, you know, I saw this tick one TikTok video. They're like, talk to them like it's your audience or like your family friend. And so I've like definitely been able to like just practice a little, um, get the nerves out. Like I'll record one session and like, I'll just look at it and see like, okay, I don't look like a human right here. So let me like yeah. redo that. Just keep going. And, you know, after a while, like it gets easy. And, yeah. You know, I can just like pull up the phone up and just record, start talking and like have a video done. Cool. So what advice would you give to someone who's like really introverted, but they really want to start filming themselves? Yeah. So I would say try to like use, um, I mean, the, one of the first things I did before, like people started hearing my voice, cause I'm kind of like self-conscious about like my voice has been nasally. One of the things I use was like a sound. Um, and I was just like, while the sound was like playing. Yeah. And so one, it's like showcasing your personality, but they don't like really, if that's like, especially like speaking, like the action of like actually speaking, that's something that like gets you like nervous. Like I would recommend like using a sound or like not even talking to the camera. Like you can use pictures, um, captions, and a lot of those videos do really well. So mm. being able to find your niche, but then also if you wanna expand your audience and you know, the people you reach out to, you know, just, Use your voice. You know, I think the best way to like over, like you'll never know like how you're received unless you actually do it. And yeah. so that's, you can that's, always delete the PO2s. So yeah, it's like, that's good advice. Yeah. Do you edit your TikTok videos by yourself? Yeah, I, yeah, I edit all my videos by myself. Okay. Um, how long I does just it, use TikTok. How long oh. does it, I used the TikTok platform to edit your videos. Yeah, I think the first video I made, my um, college to citizens reaction, I used like the Apple, what's, what's it called? Like the uh, Apple editing iMovie? app. iMovie? Um, yeah, iMovie, yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, uh, but yeah, TikTok is really, Easy. I, I just watch like, videos on TikTok, like how to like make mm. something look seamless. And I think it's really intuitive too, so. It is very accessible as well, that platform. Uh, what is your biggest lesson in making content in general? Yeah. Okay. My biggest lesson, I would say it's, I have two actually. So I would say consistency is like key. Um, cause like there are times like I have like a TikTok drought, like my videos won't do well at all, but I have to like, remember that, like, just keep posting. Like, yes, I'm posting, you know, to get like views and like interactions, like my content but i also just like making videos too like i like tiktok so be consistent but like know why you're doing it and i would also say like a digital you have a digital footprint like that's really important a lot of like like there's like a lot of comments that i have felt you know somewhat like inclined to respond to but they don't necessarily reflect my response wouldn't have necessarily reflected best of my character um be aware of like what you repost, what you like, um, cause you know, you have a digital footprint across yeah. LinkedIn, talk, Instagram, all that matters. So yeah. Yeah. And just, yeah. Do it for fun. Like, please don't stress out over TikTok because yeah, some people blow up like really well on TikTok, but then like make sure you also have like skills outside of TikTok. I see. Was there any like specific skills that you've mastered before creating content that helped you build that audience like for example speaking maybe i mean yeah i i feel like i'm a very intentional speaker i'm really well at like using my vocabulary uh vernacular whatever you want to call it i feel like speaking was something that was definitely my forte i would also say i'm like social and a lot of my videos are focused around my friends mm. and so um you know, they're all, they're willing to like be in the video because, you know, I've, they already know my report. Like I have a good report with them. Like they know that I wouldn't do anything to embarrass them or like, you know, make them look, um, you know, look bad in any situation. So yeah. I think like sometimes having soft skills matters more than, you know, actual technical skills because those can come, but like soft skills, you have to like, it takes experience to learn that. Whereas technical skills, you know, two days and boom, you're an expert, yeah. kind of. Yeah. Also, do you script your own videos? Like, do you plan it out? Mm -hmm. 
I would say some, like, especially the were Harvard students, of course, like, I knew exactly what I wanted it to be in the video. So I, like, told my friends to, like, meet me at each location. Mm. But for a few of them, like, I'll, like, start the video, and then in my head, like, I'll just, like, I'll pause it and then, like, think of something else to say, and then I'll... Spontaneous. Yeah, yeah, I think, like, that helps, too, with, like, not sounding like a robot. That's something I'm working on, like, not being so, like, you know, federal. But, like, Mm. yeah, uh, this one of the videos that I have, like, in my drafts right now, I was just, like, coming up with stuff off the dome, and I think it'll be pretty good. Cool. As a student and a creator, because um, both of us are students, I'm a student as well, and a creator, um, if you had to restart your journey, what would you prioritize first? I definitely would have prioritized just like quantity first, simply because I know often it's like quality over quantity, but like simply because my first video blew up like so quickly and like I took three months of like just not posting, like had I just like kept posting, you know, it would have been a different story. Yeah. I think like my engagement, I would have had like a bigger audience too. So, I mean, that's something I always think about like, dang, like (laughs) I'm like at 30, I could have had like 60 K by now, but it's like fine. Mm. So quantity first when you start out, cool. If you had the yeah. chance to talk to your younger self, what advice would you give to him? I would say like everything like works out. I feel like when I was younger, like I had I had a plan for everything, right? And so if anything like got in the way or like deterred me, like I just, I would take it as like, kind of like an attack or like, um, I would take it personally, right? Like, is there something that I did that, you know, kind of, you know, derailed like my plan of action. But now like looking back in hindsight, I have plans. Like I always have like intention behind what I'm doing, but sometimes things don't work out and I find like a new avenue, um, a new avenue, something that I'm able to, you know, put my talents into and, you know, I have just as much fun and passion for that. So I would say like, everything works out. Like you don't have to, Stress. everything doesn't have to be perfect in order for you to like succeed. Hmm. I see. That's good advice. Um, do you have anything else to promote? Feel free to plug anything, what you're up to, what's going on in your life, what your goals are. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm going to be, like, so much more consistent on TikTok now because, like, I actually enjoy posting. Um, but other than that, like, the goal this year, I mean, this semester is to definitely do better as far as, like, my grades. Like, I think I did well, but, like, we can do better. I got to start thinking about law school. I got to start thinking about mm-hmm. internships. So, you know, my goal, like, this entire year is to just be, like, productive, like, focus on productivity. I see. In the long term, do you see yourself still creating content on TikTok or even like starting a YouTube channel or something like that? Yeah, I think like first, like I would like just like make videos for myself, especially my family, because I'm like so far away from them, like when I go to school. So just keeping them like up to date, like I definitely think I want to explore LinkedIn more, which I think is so funny, but like, like using LinkedIn a bit more to Mm kind of like network as a platform as like a professional platform as well and then like there's just one youtuber she she went to duke law school and now she's like a big law attorney and that's kind of like my dream so i think i want to i think i would like make like youtube i don't know how but you know it's in the yeah it's in the cards that's cool all right we have some time for the q a from the people watching uh nomad comp do you have any questions for aaron here you can type it in the chat, unmute yourselves. I'll pull up the chat. Did you have trouble being consistent? Did you have, uh, did you say, did you have trouble being consistent? Yeah. Do you have trouble being consistent? Yeah, I did like, I mean, 
obviously like with my first video but then also um like when my i thought because like my first couple of videos because they went so viral that like my audience would like stay engaged with me but that's like definitely not the case i waited maybe two weeks to post like another video and it just like yeah it's something it's like but also you have to understand like the tiktok algorithm that's something i'm still learning so yeah i definitely had a, like a problem like being consistent just like not feeling motivated to post but i think now like seeing like all of like accomplished over i guess like i mean now like marks a year it's so, like my like a full year of like being on tiktok like i'm definitely learning to you know prioritize consistency even if you know the video doesn't do well just like keep posting because I mean, you like TikTok, so do it. What's the bare minimum of um, how frequent you post? Is it like once a week, twice a week, or once a fortnight? Sometimes I'll post like four four times a week. Other okay. times, once a week. It just like depends Random. on like the, the yeah the content like I've thought of because I have like so many drafts, but like some of them are just like cool. So yeah. I try to at least like post once a week because. I'm gonna try to do like twice a week now because like I like I say like I just like posting now but like um try to post at least once a week just to like keep your like audience engaged or at least yeah. have your like video show up on their um for you page. Hmm. Cool. Any other questions? Yeah. Can I ask? Yeah, sure. As a creator, do you love what you are doing? As a creator, do you do love, love what you're doing? Yeah, I I definitely love like aspects of like content creation. I can I can definitely see how if you take it too seriously, it can affect your mental because now you're attaching like your worth to how well your videos are performing, and in some cases, like that's just like once again like the algorithm like you don't like people don't know how tiktok works like it just does that sometimes and so i like i love like creating content but i don't take it seriously because one like i don't see tiktok or like content creation as like my primary source of like motivation yeah either because i'm in school like i know what i want to do long term professionally but i feel like you know if you are grounded first like if you're grounded if you want to do like if you want to take um content creation like seriously if that's something you want to do um by all means do that but like also like make sure you're like you're grounded and why you're doing that um and because like i already have like passions outside of content creation it's easier to use this as like something supplemental to highlight the things that i'm doing and it makes it so much more fun yeah and don't let the metrics and the results of your content get to your head because at the end of the day you can stay consistent if you like actually enjoy the process of creating content and filming and speaking and stuff that's a good question yeah, i think that's yeah, i think that's like so important like because there are weeks where like i'll i'll get like maybe two thousand views in one week and i will have posted maybe four videos right so like 500 views for like my and maybe it's 50 likes on it but then you know a month later i end up having like 20,000 views that week or you know 200,000 like a week i had like 2 million so i mean a lot of things that you post are out of your control but i mean like if you're able to find your niche i think i'm like siding more towards you know lifestyle academic like social commentary more so yeah. yeah so if you do like find your niche find what works for you find what, like your comments are usually about find like when the people followed you like what video did these people follow you and now start like being consistent like have playlists i like would encourage you like make like if you are like on tiktok use like mm -hmm. the playlist option because now if you have like a video that like got ten thousand views okay now they're inclined to kind of like scroll and see the other videos that you're making. Yeah, I'm pretty sure YouTube and Instagram has playlists too. Yeah. But TikTok has the best like platform for playlists and stuff. Yeah. For sure. Any other questions, Comp Nomad?
Yeah, they are. Yeah, no worries. Uh, 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 what was it? Um, yeah, so you said you go to like Harvard. Um, has the school contacted you about some of those controversial like clicks or they just like kind of like nobody's really paid any attention? Yeah, so I think, um, like, I'm pretty sure they've seen, like, my videos because we have a, like, Harvard content creation, like, adjacent um, club, if that makes sense. Like, they're sponsored by, through, like, the Harvard College to make content. And so, like, I know they've seen my videos because, like, um, <laughs> I have a bigger platform um, than, like, a few of, like, the creators who are, like, um, like, sponsored through Harvard. But it's like, I'm not like bashing Harvard. Like, once again, like, free speech, that's like, they can't, like, just because I say something doesn't like, you know, I'm not like bashing Harvard in the first place, but just because I say something doesn't mean like they can, you know, attack what I'm saying. But I also have like, through the Harvard Foundation, the Harvard Square Foundation. So it's like the city, like, right, like, that surrounds like the actual college. Um, they've like reached out to me and I've done like like sponsorship videos for them. So Oh sweet. Yeah, so like like I got a free like I got a free dinner, I got a gift card oh, cool. to like their gift the Harvard gift shop. Um Hey man, we're so I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. In terms of brand deals, have you ever had any experience with that or are you planning to? Yeah, so, um, well, I never had prior experience to brand deals until, like, I started making TikToks, but I've definitely, like, been, like, done my research as far as, you know, pricing, because I thought, like, initially, like, the first brand deal offered me $50, and I thought that was, like, crazy, that was great, right? But then I'm realizing I can kind of leverage my followers, even, like, 30K, while it's big, it's a big number, it's smaller, like, it's not, like, 300,000, so, but I even realized, like, with, like, 30k, if someone would offer me, like, $50, I could counter and say, like, 150 or 200, cool. and they would listen, right, or if my goal was 100, I could say 150, mm -hmm. and then we can meet in the middle, but, yeah, like, I've definitely had, like, HBO, I got sponsored by, um, I think, that, yeah, are they called Max now? Or H basically, yeah. HBO I did like Max. a whole, yeah, HBO That's Max, so yeah. So cool. I did like a whole like four video um series with them. I've, I'm sponsored by Be Real, um, like the. Oh, cool. The <laughs> yeah, Be so Real. I'm, yeah, so I make videos for them. Um, who else has reached out? Lots of, I get like lots of like academic um, based. <laughs> yeah, I get like lots of like lots of like academic based like sponsorships, but I'm like I'm intentional with like what I choose to sponsor though because like just because they're offering me money doesn't mean like it aligns with like the yeah. content that I'm being. Yeah, it's so a kind of cherry pick which deal you want. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Any but, other questions yeah. for Comp and Nomad? If not, I think that's it. Thank you, Aaron, for attending this interview it has been really good um thank you so much this where, was like a, such a cool opportunity yeah where can we find you where can everyone find you what's your tag yeah, so my tiktok is k it's cool kid underscore at so it's k i'm not actually going to chat to you but it's like k o o l k i d underscore at and then on like instagram it's a a r zero and underscore t h Cool. And then if you want to like follow me on LinkedIn, just type in Aaron Thompson Harvard because there's a lot, there are a lot of Aaron Thompsons, but <laughs> not that many go to Harvard. Not so that many go to Harvard. Harvard. Yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. it'll pop up that way. So cool. Thank you, yeah. Aaron. I'll send you this uh, recording if you want to through like Google Drive or something. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Have a nice day. You have a great day too. Thank you. Bye, Bye guys. Bye.